Have you ever heard of the Brelins? If you haven't and you are interested in behavior modification procedures and animal training, it is just a matter of time. Marion and Keller Brelin changed the world for the better. They played a crucial role in developing and promoting humane animal training methods. It is Jose here from Train Me Please. Let's go. In the late 1930s, both Brelands studied under B.F. Skinner at the University of Minnesota. There, they learned firsthand how to use shaping or training by successive approximations to teach animals. Skinner was an absolute legend in the psychology field and the father of operant conditioning, which is basically what we now use to teach dogs, children and each other. In 1942 and 1943, they worked with Skinner on military research, training pigeons to guide missiles. Can you imagine that? They trained pigeons to guide missiles. And that happened during World War II, more than 80 years ago. The project was successful, but never implemented due to changing military needs. In 1941, the Brelins got married. In 1943, they opened Animal Behavior Enterprises, ABE, they did this in order to explore the commercial potential of operant-based animal training. ABE faced challenges, skepticism from colleagues and doubts about the business's potential success. They received the first contract in 1947 with General Mills for farm feed promotions. And off they went to produce acts like Popgun, Pete and Largo Larry. Basically, they brought the knowledge and principles of operant conditioning from labs into the public eye. They pioneered the use of trained animals in television programs, ads, and educational films. They trained over 140 different animal species. In 1955, they opened the IQ Zoo in Hot Springs, Arkansas, featuring diverse animal acts and exhibits, becoming a popular tourist attraction. In the 50s and 60s, their methods spread to marine mammal and bird training. According to my research, the Brelins were incredibly important in refining operant training methods. Their methods were initially rejected in the dog training industry, but that would change. Oh boy, how would that change? They introduced the concept of a bridging stimulus for effective and precise communication during training. We now use clickers, whistles and the word yes or good as bridging stimulus when training animals. The Brelins published the article The Misbehavior of Organisms in 1961, which was slightly controversial at the time. They listed some problems encountered while conditioning animals. Specifically, they concluded that understanding, predicting and controlling a species behavior requires knowledge of its instinctive patterns, evolutionary history and ecological niche. A notable example involved a raccoon conditioned to pick up coins, exhibiting instinctive quote-unquote washing behavior by rubbing and not releasing the coins. The article was influential, reaching psychologists, biologists and anthropologists, but sparked controversy as some, including Skinner, interpreted it as departing from operant conditioning. The Brelins clarified they did not intend to leave the field, but aimed to acknowledge the existence of instinctive behavior previously discounted. In the early 1960s, the Brelins were hired by the Navy to work with dolphins. During this period, they met Bob Bailey, the Navy's first training director, and formed a partnership with him. Bob Bailey is another big name in all that we know about dog training and behavior modification procedures using operant conditioning. I'm always mesmerized by his content when I listen to him speak about the many incredible things they were doing and trialing back then. Bob Bailey became a pioneer in using dolphins for open ocean work and joined Animal Behavior Enterprises as research director in 1965, Keller Breland passed away that year, but ABE continued to operate for several more decades. In 1976, Marion married Bob Bailey. Marion and Bob operated Animal Wonderland in Hot Springs from 1972 to 1981. The facility focused on educating the public about animal behavior and training. We will get back to this incredible story in just a second, but first, 
Could I please ask you to click the like button down below so that more people can find this content? Cute photo as a thanks. Marian extended her understanding of behavior modification principles to individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. She returned to graduate school, earned a PhD in psychology in 1978, and she also served as a professor at Henderson State University until her retirement in 1998. In the mid-90s, Marion played a key role in popularizing clicker training using the internet to educate a new audience and offering chicken training classes. Until her death in 2001, Marion advocated for humane treatment and training of animals. She emphasized the use of positive reinforcement and avoided punishment in training methods. The legacy of Marion and her two husbands lives on through ongoing modern animal training programs. Bob Bailey continued teaching seminars and workshops worldwide after her death. Their impact is evident in various realms, from the portrayal of Eddie, the Jack Russell Terrier on Frasier, to the modern humane training of animals under human care. Their pioneering work continues to shape our understanding of animal behavior. The Breland story is unique, not fitting the traditional academic or animal training narratives of their time. They changed our world and they made it a little better. If you would like to show your support for all the research I did to put this video together, you can leave me a super thanks or buy me a coffee. It is super simple, link in the description below. Could you also leave me a comment down below with the keyword history? That will let me know that you watched the video to this point. Next, I think you will enjoy this video here. Obrigado pessoal, até a próxima. Tchau!